We all want our horses to be easy to ride and easy to play with. In this episode, I'll talk about how it's actually hard to make things easy and why we need to fall in love with the process and commit to working hard. So here we go. Episode 64. It's hard to be easy. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony. Because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. So today I was, uh, I had a little block of time in the afternoon and I have a great big list of things that I'm supposed to be doing. And I don't know about you, but have you ever had those lists and you're looking at the list and you're like, ugh, I really don't feel like doing anything on this list, you know, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I should goof off. I was like, I, I, I felt like I needed to get something done. So I kept looking at my list and trying to figure out what I was going to do. And then I I cheated a little bit. I added something to the list. I added one more thing to the list, but it was something I wanted to do. I was like, oh, I'll do a podcast. (laughs) So I needed to do one anyway uh, by the end of the weekend. Uh, But I I thought, why don't I just do it now? Because that actually sounds like fun. The master of my own schedule. (laughs) So here we are. All right. So what I was thinking about for this episode was how it's easy to make things difficult for ourselves, and it's sometimes hard to make things easy. Now, sometimes it's actually easy to make things easy, and unfortunately, it's rarely difficult to make things difficult. So... (laughs) This is what was going on in my head today. So I thought, let's just play with this idea. So I think we all have a picture, our dream of, you know, what we're aiming for. And it's probably not a picture of someone struggling or to connect this to horses. You know, it's not a picture of someone working hard using all of their aids in a really strong way. Our dream probably is related to effortlessness and ease. It's, it's a dream of things seemingly happening on their own and of the horses just kind of reading our minds and they're doing it. And yes, this can happen. This is actually what I try to do is try to create uh, exercises and a training program that helps people achieve those magical moments where it doesn't feel like it has to be magic. You know, the planets don't have to be aligned. We need to set things up so that these moments actually happen. You know, it's, but it's kind of like no one's an actual overnight success, right? And, you know, for more than 15 minutes, right? Someone can be an overnight quote unquote success, but you know, 15 minutes of fame, but usually behind all those seemingly overnight successes, is a lot of hard work. There's a lot of dedication. There's a lot of focus. There's a lot of fitness. And there's a lot of failure. And that's why we need to love the process. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why we need to love the process, especially because we're working with horses, living beings who didn't necessarily sign up for any of this. But the fact is, that when you focus on processes, you're going to get better results. But focusing on results may may not, uh, you know, if you focus on just the results, you're, you might not get them because you're not focusing on how to get the results. And often when I see people who are just focused on results or speaking for myself, when I have just been focused on results, it can almost make you resent the process. Like, why aren't we there yet? <laughs> why hasn't, why haven't I had the success yet? 
So it makes you kind of resent the process. And horses are all about process. Horses are, my microphone keeps falling down. <laughs> so if, if the volume is like going up and down, it's because my microphone is going up and down. Don't do that microphone. Stay, stay. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Horses are all about process. They're all about the journey. And we humans are usually about the destination. So what I've noticed about myself is away from horses, I realized I kind of dislike processes. So maybe, maybe it's because I, I have to dive so much into the process and live in the process and it can take a long time to, you know, get all the way the final picture of results that we want. Um, you know, that when I do anything else, I'm like, oh, let's just get it done. <laughs> so when my husband, partner, friend, <laughs> Dana, and I have a project, you know, that's outside of horses, some sort of project for the house or the property. Like I always want to like jump into the fun part. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's get to the fun part. And Dana is so great at planning and preparing and gathering the right materials, testing. <laughs> I have to surround myself with team members who love to do all of those things uh, because I just want to like have an idea and then do it and then turn it on. So I think that's actually one of my superpowers. Uh, one of my superpowers outside of horses is to bravely dive in and take things from idea to done. <laughs> and, and I'm actually okay if they're not perfect because then I can do it again <laughs> and again and again and again. So, uh, Dana is really good at preparing, loving the, he's like a tinkerer. He'll go out in that shop and he'll like work really hard and do just one little step. But you know what, when he's done, it's usually done right the first time and really happy with the results. So <laughs> outside of horses, I find it really easy to make things difficult. I can knock things out, but then I have to redo them or I have to clean up a bigger mess later because I didn't do the process of putting down the drop cloth because <laughs> I wanted to get right to this. Let's just paint, <laughs> forget the drop cloth. And then I have to spend, I make my life harder because then I got to like clean up, you know, all this the stuff that spilled. <laughs> so Dana works harder to make things easier. So more pre-planning so that when it's done, it's done well. And so I guess this is, you know, reason number 32,458, why Dana and I are a really good team, not just, you know, relationship wise, but, you know, he's my business partner too and, uh, and life partner. So we help each other <laughs> because on the other hand, I think sometimes Dana can like prepare and prepare and prepare and he's kind of fine not completing where I'm like, let's get it done. <laughs> let's get to the end so we can celebrate. But what Dana does with life is what I can do with horses. And I guess that's why maybe I use up all that skill so much with all my horses that in every other area, I just want to like, let's just make it happen. So <laughs> we know that there are no shortcuts with horses, but we also, we also don't have to commit to working harder than we need to. So with horses, we want to work hard to make things easy, but we don't want to work harder than we need to. So with horses, we can end up, um, it can be, it can be easy to make things hard. That happens a lot with horses. It's really easy to make things hard. And that's the situation when we are usually over, we're over facing our horses or we're somehow not picking the appropriate exercise, right? So we might be in a situation where it was too easy to make things hard. If we're spending, um, we're spending, we're doing, we're doing something and it's actually making things worse. 
And so it was easy because we just like threw our horse into the situation or we just randomly picked an exercise. That was easy. I didn't even have to think about that. Well, yeah, maybe we needed to think about it more. And, you know, I, I think, I think sometimes a lot of dressage students, at least a lot of the dressage students that I've met, the ones who are stuck at the lower levels probably feel like they're, you know, they're put themselves in training with someone that was easy. I'll just put myself in training and that person will tell me what to do, but they're there. And, you know, that was easy. It was smart in a way, but things are just getting worse. So you're working hard and things are just getting worse and worse. So the key is to work hard, but by, but (laughs) by work hard, I mean, to give what you're doing a lot of dedication, a lot of focus, a lot of fitness, and a lot of failure, because you can't learn without some failure. And so, you know, a lot of times when I see students who just say, well, I'm going to go put myself in training. Um, I mean, yes, this can work. It's good to have a trainer. And, and sometimes these situations can work, but what you want to notice is when that brilliant, easy plan is not yielding you the results, that's the red flag. And so that's when, you know, the, 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 how, you know, when you've made an easy decision, that's making things more difficult is when it's not working, you're, you're continue to struggle. And so that means that it's usually, um, the wrong exercise. It's the, whatever you're doing is not appropriate for that moment in some way. So work hard, but put the work into dedication, focus, fitness, right? So you, every student has to take some responsibility for their education. And even if you put yourself into training with someone, you can't just show up and let them tell you what to do. And you've got to put that studying in that, uh, independent spirit of independent problem solving with whatever that thing is that your, your trainer keeps telling you every single lesson again and again and again, <laughs> it's easy. Your trainer will just remind you every single time to do this. That's when you have to think, wait, you know, I've made it easy for myself. I'm going to let my trainer remind me all the time, but it's not actually working. It's actually making things harder because you're struggling more and you're not getting past whatever obstacle or level that that is. So you've got to say, wait, I'm not going to make it easy. I'm going to make it harder for myself. I'm going to go study. (laughs) I'm going to go, why does she keep telling me to do this thing with my leg? Why am I still doing that with my leg? Why does she keep screaming inside leg to outside rain and it's not working? Maybe you need to make things a little harder for yourself and go investigate and study. And, and you've already doing that because you're listening to this podcast. And how do I know? Well, if you're not listening, you didn't hear me just say that. So when you dedicate yourself or you commit yourself to working hard, and I don't mean using strong aids, I mean, dedication, focus, fitness, failure, experiment, you're going to then notice when things get easier. You don't try to make it easy. Commit to putting the time and the dedication and the work in, and then you'll notice over time Hey, that was easier. (laughs) And you'll just keep dedicating yourself to the next thing that you need to learn. But if you, if you commit to loving the process of hard work, you're going to start realizing that you're enjoying easier and easier moments. Now, another key is to realize that hard, whenever I say work hard, it doesn't actually have to mean difficult. There's, there's a, Maybe it's just semantics, but I think there is a difference, at least least in my brain, between hard work and difficult work. So for me, hard can mean dedication. So I went to the dictionary. I looked up. I'm always interested when I start thinking, well, I have a distinction in my mind about what these words mean, but sometimes I'm wrong. So I like to look it up. So I looked up. Uh, the definition of hard, and there's a few different definitions, you know, like a hard surface, right? Difficult to break. But one of the definitions of hard meant with a great deal of effort. 
And so that kind of, that's what I'm saying when I think, you know, put in the hard work, put a great deal of effort into your riding. Yes, it doesn't mean you should be squeezing with 20 pounds of pressure with your legs and 100 pounds on your hands and you have to ice your hands. It's not that kind of hard. I just put a great deal of effort into your training. Now, when I looked up the definition of the word difficult, there were a couple definitions that jumped out to me. So one definition of difficult means characterized by or causing hardships or problems. So we don't want to be causing ourselves hardships and we don't want to be causing ourselves problems. So that's, you know, that's a difficult situation. So that's what I mean. It can be easy to make things difficult. Yeah, it can be easy to create ourselves hardships or problems for ourselves by choosing the wrong exercise <laughs> or overfacing our horse. Now there's another definition of the word difficult, which is not easy to please or satisfy. <laughs> and we definitely don't want to be seen as difficult. You know, if our if we could ask our horse, how would you describe your your human? We definitely don't want them to use the word difficult. <laughs> Right. So we have to that. And so that's part of the, you know, make it hard, but don't be difficult. Enjoy putting in a great effort to your work. But but at the same time, be easy to please, be easy to satisfy. So that's where those like micro goals along the way be committed, you're going to work hard. And then we celebrate those little micro successes. We're easy to satisfy, we're easy to please along the way. So we work hard, put the effort in, put in the dedication, put in the focus, put in the time, put in the, the fitness, be willing to fail, but don't cause yourself problems and certainly don't be not easy to please. Now, I also said that sometimes it is easy to make things easy. So yes, sometimes it is just a small tweak that we need to make that can change everything. But <laughs> the people where that works, the situations where, oh, you just say this one thing and everything's easier. It was easy to make things easier. Where that principle works is with people who are already dedicated to the process. They're already putting in the time and the hard work. For people who are putting in the hard work of dedication and focus, then yeah, small tweaks can make a big difference. Small tweaks don't make a big difference with people who aren't already thinking along those lines or already dedicated. They've been, they've been focusing on it. They're trying to find the answer. They haven't been able to find it. And bing, there comes that golden little nugget that changes everything. And that's why you can't aim, you can't uh, expect easy. You, you commit to the hard work and you notice that easy will start to show up. Now with our horses, um, I know that anyone listening to this podcast is interested in their horses having a good deal and finding the ease that comes with harmony. How do I know? Because I named this podcast Horse Training in Harmony. <laughs> See what I did there? So, but in being interested in our horses having a good deal and finding ease doesn't mean that we're going to shy away from hard work and hard lessons. So embracing focus, fitness, failure applies to our horses too, in order for them to find a place of ease. So I do see sometimes when riders or horsemen are really focused on their horses having an easy time, they want everything to be in harmony. Um, but you have to remember there's process, there's product and you, we always want it to, you know, set our horses up to have the easiest way of finding success. We're always trying to do that, but we, there is a process with horses too. And so my whole sweet spot of healthy biomechanics process is kind of based on this in a way, right? So we're not trying to find a perfect we're trying to, we're not trying to make perfection happen, but we're playing with all the options. And part of the process 
that I help students with is to find the edges of what doesn't work. You know, what level of energy is too high? What level of energy is too low? You know, where, how far over with their shoulder to the left feels really crooked. How far over to the right feels really crooked. And so we're giving the horse the opportunity to feel some possibilities and then choose. And that's part of what helps engage the horse's mind and helps um, create that willingness because they're actually, they've seen the options and they're seeking that sweet spot also. So we're kind of using exercises that involve uh, problem solving. And the horse has a chance to try his own ideas out. And then we wait for them to make a change. So in a lot of the exercises that, that I do, sometimes things get a little messier before they get better. And that can be really disconcerting to some <laughs> dressage students uh, that come from that world where it's got to be right. But uh, it, it works. It works to play with the possibilities. As long as we've done the work to take our best guess at what is the appropriate, or as I say, what is the fair, reasonable, and possible lesson for the horse on this day. That's the important part, that we're not just flinging stuff at them and going, hey, you figure this out. We're noticing, we're trying to choose the right exercise for that horse so that even if the exercise is a little challenging for them and they have to think a little harder or work a little harder to figure it out, if it is the fair, reasonable, and possible appropriate lesson for that horse on that day, then it will help him find a place of ease. So we're allowing the horse to go through a process. We're not trying to shelter them or hold them together or not let them put a foot wrong. We're letting them explore a little bit. So don't be afraid of work. Don't be afraid of hard lessons. And don't be afraid of asking your horse to work and, and have a hard lesson as long as it's appropriate. How do we know? Well, we put some time into thinking about it. <laughs> and if it's not making things easier the next day, then we think about it even harder. Or we ask for help. So we need to have that dream. We need to make the commitment. We need to love the process and then notice and celebrate the ease that results from it. And if things aren't getting easier, <laughs> then we're likely needing to change what we're doing. And that's, that's one of the reasons that I, one of the many reasons I love my video classroom, because in the video classroom is where I show so much of the process. So the step-by-step -step course is really teach you what to do and show you here's me doing the exercise. And in, in the video classroom, which is open to everybody, I really show the process. I show coaching students through things. I narrate what I'm, you know, in real time while I'm having a session with my horse and like, well, that's not working. And here's what I'm thinking. And here's how I respond to what's working. And here's how I decide if this is the right exercise or not. And I do that with such a, a variety. So, you know, we need to explore all the facets of our training. This is dressage naturally is a very holistic kind of training method. So, you know, we have videos, um, everything from mindset to time management, to liberty, to online, to riding, to foundation, biomechanics, gymnastics, because these are all the things we need to be thinking of. You know, people who are interested in dressage or even just interested in helping their horses move better, it's so easy to quickly go into trying to fix it all up to look right and fix it all up, trying to make perfect. You're trying to like, you know, get there to the end. You're trying to get to the fun stuff. Let's just do the shoulder in. That's the fun stuff. Just like me. Let's just get to the painting. <laughs> but no, you got to like think about it and you got to put up little sample swatches and see which one you like better in different light. And you got to get the drop cloth out and make sure you have the right brushes. <laughs> we got to do some hard work in order for it to be easy. <laughs> it's working on dressage is not just about doing dressage. It's about stepping back and looking at the whole process and being dedicated to the whole horse, because guess what? Your horse is not a dressage horse. He's a horse. And there's many, many aspects to his being and his life and his experience on this planet with us. So we need to take in everything. And yeah, it's going to take some hard work. 
but it's the hard work that's going to make things easy. Fall in love with the process of fall in love with the hard work of learning and fall in love with the process of your horse's learning. All right. I hope that helps. Bye.